Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you how laminar flow wings have a different property when landing. Now this is one of those things that I didn't find out until uh, fairly recently because uh, one of the things I've been working on is in my complex. So now I have a complex cert as well as a high performance cert, which is pretty slick. But one of the things I had learned is uh, when you go to land planes that are usually these higher wing loading planes, the actual process for uh, flaring is just slightly different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run through a traffic pattern real quickly and just kind of show you what I mean by that. So we'll go, we're over at New Bedford Regional. This is in well, kind of eastern Massachusetts, uh, not too, too far from the ocean. That's uh, kind of right off your right wing there. And we're just going to be flying the Mooney 20 here, which is a really, really good example of a high performance laminar wing here. This is not a conventional, you know, kind of little, uh, let's, uh, let's go, giddy up, giddy up, let's go kind of an airplane. As a matter of fact, the aircraft is so aerodynamic, it actually has speed brakes that could be popped out of the wings for the purposes of helping to cut the airflow over it in order to go ahead and change its performance. So normally when we land a plane, um, when, especially when we think of things like the 172 or like the 182, you know, the archers, things like that, we generally want to land the plane right at the stall warning. And one of the reasons we do that, of course, is because you don't want to bounce off the ground and I kind of keep flying. But the other advantage to that too is the plane tends to settle at the correct attitude. Now the problem is when we get planes like this that tend to be a higher performance aircraft, as well as uh, be a lot more slippery, if we try to land them at a full stall, we end up in a situation where the nose is going to be extremely high and it's actually going to put us in a bit of danger for a prop strike when the propeller stop comes flying back down. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring us around this corner real quickly here. Give it a little bit of right foot. Wow, the uh, rudders on this one are really sensitive. I'm going to go ahead and put the wheels down now. Less than 120. That looks pretty good. 1100 feet is the local traffic pattern altitude. I'm just going to help slow us down a little bit. I don't want to do anything too, too chaotic. So what we're going to do is we're going to execute a typical landing. Uh, that's going to be one where we're basically going to land it at the beep. Uh, this aircraft has a very distinctive stall warning, which unfortunately is the same sound as the you forgot to put your landing gear down, <laughs> which I really wish they didn't do that. They should be two completely separate sounds, in my opinion. But hey, I'm not Mooney. Oh, fun fact about Moonies, you can read the gas right out the window. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and pull the throttle back. Go ahead and pop down our landing flaps here. And we're going to go ahead and start slowing down. Now, normally, this plane, by the way, because of the way it is just so draggy when you put everything down, is I could just cut the throttle and land it now. I wouldn't even need to touch the throttle again. But of course, if it popped down that notch, uh, we'd have to be on the throttle pretty quick because this thing really does slow down. So let's go ahead and I take, whoa, it's not quite that sensitive, but it is sensitive. Come around the corner here. And now, like I said, we're just coming into our base leg. And what we're going to do is we're going to execute this landing to a full stall. So we're not going to let the plane touch the ground until it's literally completely run out of energy. Energy, and we'll see exactly what happens when you do it. Now in the real world when we execute this, like I said, the nose is going to get very, very, very high and we're very, very likely to drop a wing at the last possible second. Now in flight sim, that's going to be a slightly different sensation here and I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right, there's our runway. We're a little high. That's fine. Back the throttle up. Idiot checks. Looks pretty good. Get our nose down. We're still coming in really fast. The real plane, you would not have any issues with this approach. You would actually be on the gas again. But for whatever reason, this aircraft is extra slippery in uh, flight sim, which is okay. All right, there we go. It's about 75, which is a little fast. Let's go ahead and pull up. We want to be doing right around 70 knots here. So you can see, I can barely see the end of the runway at 70 knots here. And again, I think that's a couple different functions here. That's pretty good. And I know we are very low, but that's all right. All right, that's a good spot. We'll go ahead and pull the throttle back. And now we're just going to prevent the plane from landing. Now watch what happens if we play this right out to the full stall. Look at the nose angle. Look at the nose angle. Look at the nose angle. And there goes the drop. Oh, 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 oh. sorry, but it demonstrated that's actually exactly what the plane would do. Notice because we held it that extra long, even though we were taught in flight school that, hey, you want to land at the full stall, we pretty much almost could have snapped the propeller off. As a matter of fact, I'm not 100% confident that it didn't strike the propeller when we did that little crimp bump there. So unfortunately, when we try to use that traditional technique, it doesn't work in this particular case on account of the fact that because of the different shape of loading, because of the different way the wing does, not only were we at a dangerous cabin angle, but we also had the problem where literally you saw how steep and how sudden that drop was that literally made the plane go like this and smack down onto the runway. So you're saying, well, that was kind of interesting. Uh, how do we fix that? Well, the key thing with planes like this is we have to fly the plane down onto the ground, which is a slightly different way of approaching it. And uh, let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fly this pattern again. I'm going to use some full power. And normally, if we're doing something nice and small like this, we probably wouldn't bother uh, bringing the gear up just because like, we're just going to be coming right around the corner here, which is uh, pretty clear. And what we're going to do this time is we're actually going to fly the plane down to the ground flat rather than try to fly the 
the plane the way we did before. Now, if you remember a little while ago, I mentioned this aircraft has speed brakes, uh, which is a really nice little toy for us because we can use it to brake up that air going over the wing right as we're about to set down. And I'll show you kind of a fun little trick with those in a second. Let's go ahead and suck the last bit of energy out of this plane as we climb up to 1,100 feet. Normally, I wouldn't recommend climbing at a 20 degree cabin angle in the uh, traffic pattern. It's uh, considered kind of verboten, but hey, whatever works. All right, gear down, one notch of flaps. All right, let's go ahead and line ourselves up. We're going to do the exact same thing this time as we did last time. The only difference is, instead of pulling the nose back to the full stall, as you're familiar with, we're going to go ahead and settle the plane on the ground. We're not going to push the plane under the ground. If you push the plane under the ground, what you're going to end up doing instead is you're going to end up bouncing, and that could be, like I said, much worse. And this aircraft, like I said, has a wheelbarrowing tendency, which is uh, kind of dangerous. But again, it's these are really, really neat planes, but man, they are not the same as Cessnas if you're uh, kind of used to that sort of flying. So I'm going to come down here, I'm looking out my window there, looking for that 45 degree marker, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and tap it. Oh jeez, that is really sensitive. Yeah, the real one does not twitch nearly that bad when you go around the corner, but that's okay. Go ahead and give myself a little bit of a pull here, that looks pretty good. I'm looking pretty smooth, and I'm just going to go right base to final here, I'm not even going to bother getting sophisticated. Nose up just a little bit, this is where everybody likes to stall and crash. We're still doing about 80 knots, so we have plenty of energy left. Keep in mind, 78 knots at 30 degrees is a stall with this particular aircraft. And now we have ourselves all lined up with the runway. Uh, same kind of problem we had last time. Joe Gumfels checks here. Everything looks pretty good. We're just a little fast. I'm going to go ahead and slip. Let the nose come down. Uh, much better. Perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and do the same landing we just did. I'm going to go ahead and put the power in. Again, we're going for about 70 knots. It's kind of the sweet spot for this particular aircraft. We are a little on the heavy side, so it's going to be a little more. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. All right. Go ahead and pull the throttle back. We're going to level off. Deploy speed brakes. Hammer down. <laughs> and if you actually look out the window now, you can see they're chilling. So what happened this time that was different? Well, you probably noticed, first of all, we hit the ground a lot softer. It makes a bit of a thunk, but anybody who's ever flown a Mooney, they thunk. There's no, like you get like on an Archer or something like that. The other thing you notice is when I deployed the speed brakes, the aircraft, it's not that it slowed down, it's that it pitched up ever so slightly. And when it pitched up like that, it was able to get me at that one degree extra nose up that it needed to be able to fly the plane down to the ground rather than holding the plane off the ground. Obviously, if you try to do that too aggressively, you go bounce and smack off the ground and it gets really nasty. But by allowing it to just reduce just a hair and then sticking it on the ground, you have a considerably greater amount of control. And you also notice I used a significantly less amount of runway. Enjoy.